Uh, I'm Carol Muller. I was asked to say my title and uh, I usually say that I'm a woman of leisure but these days I feel like, feel like saying that I'm an unkept woman. <laughs> My journey had a long pause. Uh, when I was around about 18 or 19, I was pretty sure that I was trans, but uh, there was no internet back then. So we're talking about 81 or 82. And I grew up in Brisbane in a relatively conservative family. Um, there was no internet then, so I kind of did my research. I think I went off to the university and found a library and managed to find something. And it confused me because the definition of transsexual, as it was then, said that I would be a identified as female, but, it, but be attracted to men. And it confused the heck out of me because I've always been attracted to women. It gave me a lot of pause for thought. Um, and at the same time, I was growing up in a household where, um, sadly, one of my parents was dying from cancer. And so, um, so as not to make waves, and that was how my the household I grew up in was run, I decided to not make waves and, and just sort of put things on hold. I honestly must admit that it's, um, it's taken a while for me to feel comfortable or to get over my own imposter syndrome and I think that that was actually something that I found really hard. And I don't know if that's because I transitioned late in life because I'm very self-conscious of being a trans woman. A lot of people are obsessed with the whole idea of being passable. Um, to be able to walk around in the in general public and, and, and pass as a woman is um, to some an ideal thing, but to me it's being able to be comfortable as who I am and, and it took a little bit to actually um, accept the fact that um, I'm not going to be gorgeous or glamorous, but I'm, I'm me, I'm, I'm Carol and I'm this trans woman and to be able to then realise that I'm welcome in, in any space and especially welcome in in female-only spaces is uh, a great comfort. I just want to be that sort of person who has that um, lovely old terrace that's full of books and paintings and um, calls everyone Dahl and um, has friends that just drop by and we just talk about anything. I just want to be so comfortable in myself. And that's what I've been working towards all my life, I think, is to actually be be more me, be more authentically me, and um, keeping that secret of your trans identity, of your trans self, for an incredibly long period of time was, it was something that I don't think helped me. In fact, that was one of the things my ex and I were chatting last night about um, the life that we had together, and, and she actually said to me, you know, she said, I can see how much happier you are and how much more relaxed you are and I think that that's the thing for a lot of people is being able to live a more authentic life so much more authenticity but in a sort of edgy Ida kind of way. Here in Australia if you want to go and have any kind of gender affirming surgery it's something that you have to pay for completely yourself and for I know for a lot of people that means that they have to dig into their savings and I, I know of quite a number of trans women who have had to dip into their superannuation so that they can afford to be able to have that kind of surgery. And I don't think that's right. I think that we should have a government that supports us, as does, say, um, Japan or New Zealand or Canada or the United Kingdom or even Iran. And then I think from an ageing point of view, um, while I, I don't know what my future is, I'm really concerned about things like what happens to aged care for somebody who is a trans person, whether there's going to be any kind of welcoming retirement village that's going to accept me for who I am. But also I'm concerned for things like, um, while it may not be me, I'm concerned about things like dementia for other trans folk because I don't think we've done any research. I don't think we even know what the, what the situation is for somebody who's trans who might have uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. What worries me about growing older? I think my, my concerns are probably not unique. I, I worry about growing old on my own, uh, as a lot of people do. I mean, um, especially now as now that I'm single, I, I, I don't necessarily want to be completely on my own when I, when I get older. I, I'm lucky. I have, um, I have two children. Sadly, one of those hasn't spoken to me for two years since I've transitioned, but the other child is incredibly supportive, and we talk on a regular basis. And I know that. 
she is going to be there um, uh, as a supportive family member. And I've actually been incredibly fortunate that um, even though my ex and I separated because I, I've transitioned, she and I have remained um, incredibly good friends. And, and two days ago would have been our 27th wedding, wedding anniversary. And I, the day started off with a text message from her saying, happy anniversary. And, and I'm very proud that we've been able to get past the whole grief of separation and still be good friends. And I, I, I hope that we, we remain at least friends uh, for that length of time. I think a lot of people have to um, maybe meet a trans person to understand that we're no different. Um, to who they are, that we have um, the same um, same family opportunities, different family opportunities, that we come from every walk of life, that we're every profession. And so my hope is that just there's much more acceptance as I grow older and that there's much more acceptance for ageing trans and gender diverse people.